Stay with us if you want to meet a couple of our radio personalities right here at Lakeshore Public Radio. They are much better looking than you might think, and they are here with me next on Lakeshore Focus. Programming is supported by NIPSCO. Today's young minds are constantly reimagining what our world will be like tomorrow. That's why NIPSCO is upgrading its infrastructure now, so we're ready for whatever comes next. More information at nipsco.com future. Welcome again to Lakeshore Focus, a weekly show highlighting the key issues, important events, and interesting people in our region. I'm Keith Kirkpatrick. Did you ever wonder what the people on radio look like? Do they have a life beyond the microphone? How did they get into a career in broadcasting? Well, today we have two of our own radio personalities from Lakeshore Public Radio here to answer those questions. So we have the drum roll, and here they are in person with real faces, Tom Maloney, who is our Vice President of Radio Operations at Lakeshore Public Media, and Sharon Jackson, host of Morning Edition and reporter at WLPR 89.1 Lakeshore Public Radio. So, glad to have you guys on the show. You're, you get to be on TV now. This is kind of weird, Keith. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks so, for having me. So, so, so uh, you know, do you kind of, is it different? Is it real different being doing this? It's a little different. It'll probably be really different if I watch it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I probably will watch it. So you guys cleaned up a little bit for this. Cleaned so. up a little bit, yeah. I had to uh, had to go home and get a jacket. Normally, in in the land of radio, it's it's t-shirts and blue jeans, and that's kind of uh, that's kind of nice. But yeah, it's cameras and lights now, and you know, what do I do with my hands on the radio? It doesn't really matter. There's a microphone right in front of you. You talk into it. You can really look anywhere. You could be doing a million other things, which is I think what we normally do. Mm -hmm. We're normally you know Pretty running much. a board and we're checking audio levels as we're talking and making sure that Do you that talk with your hands when you're on the radio? Yes, absolutely. You, you still use your hands, do you? you Maybe, think, sometimes yeah. I probably do. So you're yeah. probably still I, talking I'm not like even, this? Yeah, I mean, I'm like kind of typing on the computer. Yep. <laughs> I'm amazed using that, the mouse. I'm amazed at looking and how much stuff you guys have to control. I mean, that, that is pretty fascinating. You hit this button, turn this mm -hmm. volume, and do this. You, how do you keep that all straight? That's amazing to me. I think well, we'll probably go to Sharon for that one. Well, you know, in the beginning, um, you really have to be aware of it. You have to know what you're going to do before you do it. And so you got to keep it all straight in your mind, the order in which things need to go, um, the pots that you're going to need, you know, that which are volume levels on the board, you know, which you're going to need to turn on in sequence. How much did you... How much of this did, did you learn this both in school or did you just kind of learn it in the trenches? Both. Both. I started in high school and did it out in the real world too. So did you get a degree in this? I have a degree in communications. Okay. But, but did, I did radio. But at college did you have any radio training? I had an audio class. Okay. That was really it. Did you, Tom? And I did have radio in high school. Yeah, I was going to say that's probably more than what I had in training. My background in education is TV news, but I always wanted to get into radio, and so I used to do my own college radio show, which I don't think is really, if, you, if you're in college and you don't have a radio show, were you ever really in college? And uh, so I, I had a radio show, and that was really my first hands-on experience with the board and uh, headphones and mic level checks, because everything else that I did through school was all on air for television. So, so you wanted to do TV? That no, I wanted original? to do radio, but the programming was, uh, the news programming was specifically uh, created for television. And, you know, radio was kind of the, um, you know, maybe the stepbrother, if you will. It was the Jon Snow of, uh, of the, uh, the Stark family when it comes to uh, television. For those who are watching Game, Game of, of Thrones, Thrones that's right. right? See, I, I get the reference, so I get Jon Snow. So I, he had eagle marks all over his face a couple days ago. So anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of what you both learned was really in the trenches. I mean, is that where everybody kind of learns it in this business? Yeah. Is that where you have to kind of get in and start doing it? I think the biggest key is normally in that regard, if, you, if you're not lucky enough to have the class in high school or college and you don't have a radio show, if you want to get involved in radio and really any communications media internships are the best gateway there. Um, 
specifically because it's giving you hands-on experience in the in the real world. You know, more often than not, an internship here we we have a lot of interns with Lakeshore Public Radio and Lakeshore Public Media as a whole. Those interns have the opportunity then to really just kind of get their hands into it and mess around. And uh, I'm a big believer in you never really learn until you fail. And so you have to go on air and you have to completely bomb a newscast and mispronounce names. Okay, this is good. You've given yeah. me the opening for the failure story. That's right, so, yeah. So, but yeah, before, right. before I do the failure stories, mm -hmm. uh, Sharon, you really kind of got into this. If you got into this as a high school, you kind of always had experience then, right? Well, so it was pretty easy to step into the next thing? Yeah, I mean, I started in high school. I had TV and radio arts class, and I would give up my lunch to go into the radio station, to the radio studio, and spin. We were actually spinning vinyl then. And so I would go in and spin for an hour, you know, just so, play songs So on they the radio. still call people disc jockeys? Or? Yeah, they can. Jocks, on-air talents, on-air personalities, mm -hmm. all that. All you, that applies. Because you still do some commercial work, right? I do. Okay, so you're in, in, in one Chicago. of the states of Chicago? Yeah. Okay. 100.3 WSAG. Okay. I started saying, we can say, we can say yeah, what, we can it, what it is. <laughs> so have you done a lot of different stations? Um, yeah, actually I have through my, because I was a traffic reporter. So I was on all Did kinds you, of different stations by being a traffic reporter and a news reporter. Did you have to make your own helicopter sounds like there? <laughs> actually, I was in a helicopter. Really? At times. Yeah, I was, I was a full-time airborne traffic reporter in Vegas. I you know, went to school in Las Vegas, stayed there was a full-time... She had to get that Vegas reference in. We knew that she was yeah. going to do yeah. that, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I knew it was yeah. going to come. So so you've been... This is really your second station. You're a little different. A little bit, yeah. Because most well, people kind of jump around early in their career, don't they? A lot? Yeah. Um, not necessarily a lot as much as it is probably uh, frequently in the sense that the first couple of years you're jumping markets. So you might start off at market 160, and then you move to market 145, then you move to... Define what that is, market 160. Uh, size moving, of the market? Size of the market. So okay. you're moving around from uh, places like Madison, Wisconsin, and East Lansing, Michigan, and you're eventually trying to make your way into uh, the Green Bays of the world, and the Oklahoma Cities, the Indianapolises, the Santa Fe's, and then eventually, you want to start climbing into that top 10 market. And once you start getting to the Atlantas and the Philadelphias, you start trying to make strategic moves to get into New York, which is number one, LA, which is number two, and Chicago, which is number three. And you guys are in the big market. I got here. really lucky though. I mean, I, I think I, Vegas was market number 39 when I lived there. And they told me I would never start there, and I did. I was able to get a break there. And I wasn't full time, but I was able to build up a volume of airtime. Mm -hmm. Did you have a goal weekends. to move into a top market? Yeah, I wanted to come back home because I'm from Chicago. So I wanted to come to market number three. They said I would never make a jump from market number 39 to market number three. And I did <laughs> because... And so you can you say, know, I told you so. Yeah, well, you know, I'm not going to do that. But, I, but it was cool. I, I was actually able to make it happen. And you're from this area. So yep. this is kind of, you kind of lived in this market and just yeah, evolved more. into this market. Born and raised on the south side of Chicago, and from there I grew up, graduated high school at Boone Grove. Uh, so I've lived in Northwest Indiana for give or take the last 14 or 15 years as well, along with some other uh, moves throughout college and post college. But uh, yeah, in terms of radio, this is 89.1 on the radio dial is really the only place that I've ever called home. Wow. So l let's talk a little bit about what goes on when you guys are. Mm -hmm doing your thing, moving your hands and talking on the microphone and all this stuff. So um, failure, I, I got to hear you, you. You've already opened the door. You oh. said you can't really learn without <laughs> failing. So give where us do, a, where do give you us, begin? Um, just pick one of those failing stories. Pick one of those failing stories. Lot, right? I have, a, I have too many. Uh, and if, uh, if our CEO, James Muhammad, is uh, watching James, Pay no attention to any of this. Um, right, exactly. So years ago, and I guess I should preface this by saying a lot of stuff that I've done here is all back-end and technical. A lot of computer programming, a lot of uh, codes and rewriting codes, and um, our on-air machines, our on-air computers, because everything is done with computers now. Reel-to-reel, tape-to-tape -tape is not a thing. It's all, it's all computers. It's all digital. And I remember when I had 
taken basically the brain of one computer and I put it in the brain of another computer. It was a simple text document and I didn't realize I had done so. In doing so, I completely shut down our on-air machine for the better part of probably six to eight hours throughout the morning show, throughout all of the afternoon as well. So what do they do when the computer's down then? Everybody just stays on air and everybody just talks into a microphone the whole time. It's kind of like a pledge drive. Um, <laughs> but, put a uh, CD on. Yeah, put a CD on if you have to, but it was, uh, it was one of those uh, learning experiences and I think I've learned a lot from each of those failures. I've, to be honest, I've blown the radio station off the air more times than I can count. And computer glitches and uh, bad files that get sucked into the system have blown the computer system down. And of course, down. when that happens, everybody who's listening hears those things. Like, oh, I, it's, I gave it's Sharon terrible. a hard time the other day because I think there was one. She said, "Now oh, here's a story about you know," and it was like something completely different, mm -hmm. which we <laughs> obviously hear. And I said, "What?" I saw Sharon. I said, "What happened?" She goes. I don't even know if you hit the wrong button or somebody put the wrong story in. Yeah, oh, yeah, that was, uh, yeah, yeah, that was the a, wrong audio. Yeah, I'll, I'll plug my ears yeah, here. Yeah. <laughs> so how about, how about you, a failure that was a learning uh, situation for you? Well, I think there was one time when I left the mic on and I was trying to answer the phone. So <laughs> <laughs> every time I answered the phone, it went out over the air. So I say, hello, hello? Yeah, I was like, hey, so, Star 101. 2.7, hello, because this was in Vegas. Star 102.7, hello. I'm like thinking they're not there. Well, the mic was on. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Well, is it that, I was is, mortified. Is it that bad? Yeah. Okay. I wanted to crawl to my car. <laughs> I, I think as a, <laughs> as a host, as a DJ, a jock on air or whatever, yeah, when those things happen, you just, you just want to crawl under the desk and pretend that Do it's never there. Do people ever did. call you and or, you know, or respond to the station and say, are you guys idiots or do you oh really absolutely yeah yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah so they'll call and so they make you want to crawl to the car yeah almost it, normally it's uh it's one of those things that i think if the listener is listening and they hear these issues just know that we already know mm -hmm. we are already fully aware of whatever problems are going on so the call is like the reminder it's like the parent reminding the child about their bad grades. And it's like, no, mom and dad, I already know about my bad grades. I don't need your constant reminder I'm, of, you know, I'm being aware, terrible. I'm aware of this. So, Sharon, when you're on, I, you know, I walk by the, the studio all the time as we're coming into the TV station. And so I see you guys in there and there's movement and people. I mean, are you ever distracted by things that are happening that throw you off, you know, like Tom walking in and doing things? Are you ever yeah, thrown off by that? A little bit, so, sometimes. So, yeah. so what happens when? I think you guys were talking about the story about Tom oh. eating a peanut butter and jelly. What was the story? Well, general distractions aren't as bad as they used to be. Um, I mean, I can kind of keep going, but um, when it's, it's like in your face distractions, the intentional like ones. intentional ones, like like uh, back in two thousand nine when we were um, live, like almost all the time. Mm -hmm. um, I was reporting a story. Michael Jackson had died. I think it was like June 25th, yep. 2009. It was the day of. We were there was reading the story about his death. And he's running the board. So all of a sudden, I'm about ready to go on. And he says, hey, Sharon. And he goes, shows me chewed up peanut butter and jelly sandwich in his <laughs> mouth. <laughs> I was like, I, can't I even totally look at started her. laughing. Oh. I, I just oh. like I, I am I was crying. Tears were coming down my eyes. I was trying to hold it in. So you guys so have a hard. good time. We we have yeah. a good time, and it's uh, we would have competitions to try to figure out you know if you can get somebody to crack on air because you know you go on air, you're reading the news. It's very, it's very. This is the news. I am reading the news. You kind of feel like you're Edward R. Murrow for a brief moment in time, and uh, you know if if you've got a board op in there, if you've got a weather or traffic person or somebody else in there there's there's always going to be something else that's happening and the idea with that is you just you continue to stay focused in your you're reading your, I'm holding like a piece of paper normally it's just a computer screen so you're reading off of that and you know when some bonehead decides to go ahead and show you his chewed up lunch to go ahead and get you and he's got you he's over in the corner like I was celebrating to myself while watching her struggle through a newscast but you have to keep it lighthearted because a lot of times, I mean, you know, there are there are news stories that we're covering that, you know, either a are just so draining on you emotionally that 
you know, you need that reprieve, you need that lightheartedness, or B, it's, um, if there's breaking news, you're just updating all the time, and the constantly. And the pressure's there. So, Absolutely. So, so talk about the opposite of this. How about the time, you know, when you are, when something's really touching you, I mean, really, it's emotionally affecting you, trying to, to read that story or talk about it. I mean, have I've, you had I've that, got one, actually, it's around experience? the same time. Um, with Michael Jackson was, uh, Keith, you may remember years ago, Jada Justice, mm -hmm. a girl had disappeared right. under the care of, I believe, her little girl, yeah. uh, little girl under the care of, I think, her a cousin and the cousin's it? boyfriend or the aunt. Yeah. And, um, so how'd that affect you? you and it was, it, I wasn't reporting on the story, but I was in the studio and I remember talking to a former news director here and... Um, he, get, he had a first-hand account from one of the police officers who was there at the scene and gave me that to go ahead and get over to the, uh, uh, the news anchors at the time. And I remember just breaking down in the booth. I just, I closed the door behind me and... Were you on air? No, I was, I was not on air. This, just, was, this was off air. And so... You were just upset. I was just, you know, I was, I was shaking. I was, I was still younger as well. And this was really you the first... You were talking to me about that too. Mm -hmm. I remember how you were upset because you told me what he said. Yeah, and it was, uh, it, was, it was tough. And, um, you know, it's, it's one of those things that you figure out different ways to cope with the stress. Um, Have you ever had a story that came in where it's like, oh my gosh, I know these people? You know, I mean, personally, something that, I mean, really surprised you like that? Yeah, I've, I've had that as well. I actually had a, a friend a couple of years ago pass away on the, uh, well, he had an accident on the 4th of July and passed away on July 7th. And, um, and you heard a news here. anchor came to me and uh, at the time actually came to my girlfriend and said, hey, don't you know him? And that's how she found out that it was official because wow. another media organization had printed it and you know it, it's official we we knew it was we knew it was going to happen as a result of the accident and uh that's one of those things as well um i, I couldn't be in the room while i was being reported either and it was just one of those challenges uh, you kind of you never want that to happen right. you never want to read that and say oh my goodness i know these people or i know this person or you know so you, have you had that, Sharon, where you were struggling through a story? Or is just like something really affected you, just kind of hit you? I can't think of anything offhand. As soon as we're so you're like, done here, it'll come to me, and I'll go, oh, wait, no. I, I really yeah, can't Sharon, think of Sharon offhand. really does have just a cold yeah. heart of steel, I, I think. Well, yeah. you're just I like, do. You're, like, you're the iron woman. I guess she too is. Bad, She's got to be dealing with us. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. No, I can't, I can't think of anything offhand. Um, I mean, I'm sure I've been emotional before, but I don't know. Uh, you know. Let's talk a little bit about national public radio, about public radio, because yeah. it's, it's different. And I mean, I really respect what's put on public radio. And, but oftentimes you guys are even criticized for that. So I mean, we are. what's the upside to public radio? The upside is there's no downside. If you'll buy that, that's what I'm selling at least. Um, so really quick, I, I should make note, make mention that public radio is a lot of different things. Public radio is national public radio, which is what we know as NPR. It's American public media, which is uh, on our station where you get programs like Marketplace Morning Report, Marketplace Tech Report, Marketplace Evenings. Uh, we've got AP, I just said APM, uh, PRX, which is Public Radio Exchange. There's PRI, which is Public Radio International. So all that's feeds that come in. Correct. For CBC, and which is Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, the BBC as well. well what uh, makes public radio different than commercial? Because you work in the commercial field too. What's, what's the differences? Well, I think that you're not going to get a lot of your cop shop type stories, not a lot of robberies and shootings. Mm -hmm. You're going to get stories about politics and business and things that maybe that you might not have been exposed to before, like um, uh, stories about relationships, uh, stories about amenities, like uh, the urban farm, you know, like the, out in the suburbs, you know, people are start wanting to live close to food sources because of the local food movement. Um, I heard a story about that today uh, on Morning Edition when I was hosting. There was a story about Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton and how she was at like his wedding, like his third wedding or something, and they were taking pictures and you know being friends and like hey kissing on the cheek or whatever and you know they were talking about how rich people's relationships are more 
transactional and functional. They're not like relationships like you and me, like, like anybody else, like rich people's relationships as opposed to But it's an class. interesting story. So, so it's very interesting. So why are people still so drawn to listening to the junk mm -hmm. <laughs> that's on commercial radio? I mean, people talking about, you know, what they did last night and, you know, making fun of people. And I mean, a lot of people still listen to that. I mean, really drawn to, and, and to talk shows that are just people's opinions about stuff. Yet public radio has really substantial information. Preference. Yeah, why? Lack, I was say, yeah. lack of exposure sometimes. It has to deal with people who maybe have never listened to public radio because they didn't grow up in a household that had public radio. Uh, I, I didn't grow up listening to NPR. I grew up listening to classic rock. And uh, I kind of, in college, forced myself to start taking the castor oil and you know learning a little bit about the world around where I was. And it's something that if you don't know it exists, you don't know it's there. Mm -hmm. So why do you think people listen to that rather than well, I was gonna the say good too. stuff on public radio? I'm sorry? Rather than the good stuff on public radio? It's preference. It's what they're interested in, what they're exposed to. Um, you How know. do we get more people to be aware? We're down to just like a minute or something. How do we get more people I think aware? it's just a matter of obviously marketing, getting yourselves out there for different types of events. It's the campaign season, right? Like Sharon just talked about with Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton. Now Indiana's running into, is Mike Pence gonna be the VP? Is he not gonna be the VP? How's that gonna affect the gubernatorial uh, campaign between the GOP and John Gregg on the Democratic side? A lot of people now start listening to public radio because we, we get above the headlines and the tweets and the shares and whatnot, and the Facebook rants and public radio really explores and examines what's actually happening. It gives you the meat on that bone of the steak, you know, so you're not just getting the fat and the fluff with it, you're actually getting the substance. And during the public, uh, or excuse me, during the uh, political campaign season, this is a time that a lot of people come back or come to public radio, maybe for the first time, maybe it's for the 20th time, to go ahead and find out what's happening. And then after the campaign season, they'll go back to their traditional listening and or viewing habits when it comes to uh, public television and radio. But to so. answer your question, you know, billboard campaign, word of mouth, mm -hmm. conversation, you know. Tell your friends, it's like, tell their friends. I heard this on NPR, I heard this on Lakeshore Public Radio, yep. you know, dot, 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 whatever. So for our viewers, it's real important watching television to for them to talk it up to their friends right. and so forth. So thanks for both being on here and, and sharing this. You guys are both fun to work with, but Tom, if you ever come in while I'm shooting a show with mm -hmm. peanut butter in your mouth, you know, we'll have to have words. Sounds good. As okay. long as you keep the cameras out of the radio studio, I think we'll be good. Okay, we'll do that. Thanks for being here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I've been trying to figure out when I first heard about public radio and began to listen. It has been at least 30 years since my discovery. I recall how I immediately fell in love with the thoughtful commentaries, the interesting stories, the fascinating perspectives. There were reports on international events, business strategies, global politics, and the everyday lives of common people. I was so tired of hearing about celebrities, sports, crime, petty political fights, mundane local events, and repetitive updates on news that was not interesting to me. Public radio seemed committed to presenting news that educated. It felt like the programming was generated by reporters who sat together, sifted through important issues, and decided to look at those issues from a different perspective. As I listened, there were so many moments where I thought, wow, huh, and that's so interesting. I remember arriving at home after my drive from work and talking to my wife and kids about what I'd heard on the radio. The sharing of my thoughts and its resulting impact on me must have transferred to my kids. They are now 32 and 34 years old, and they each will share what they recently heard on national public radio. I want to say publicly that I am dismayed by the criticism that is leveled at public radio stations for being too liberal or biased in what is presented. When I hear that attack, I am reminded of history where people criticized educators and leading thinkers for presenting fact-based analysis and theories that explain how the universe operated, evolution occurred, diseases spread, or the mind worked. 
Journalism that is based on an objective presentation of information which has been researched thoroughly is so important. And that's what we hear from NPR. We are fortunate to have a public radio station located here at the south end of Lake Michigan. We have a station that brings a great national public radio and excellent local programming. When I'm in my car, 89.1 Lakeshore Public Radio is what I have tuned in. I strongly encourage you to support this television and radio station when pledge drives are on. Our members are what keep us going. Thanks for watching today. Are you immediately searching to make a pledge? Or are you ready to send us an email about today's show? Your thoughts are important, so email us at the address on your screen or reach us through our website where you can watch past Focus episodes. Join us next week for another Lakeshore Focus. I'm Keith Kirkpatrick saying, make a positive difference in our world today. Programming is supported by NIPSCO. Today's young minds are constantly reimagining what our world will be like tomorrow. That's why NIPSCO is upgrading its infrastructure now, so we're ready for whatever comes next. More information at nipsco.com slash future.